So there was a research experiment conducted on two groups of students. Group A, which was the routine group, and then group B, which was the non-routine group. And all these students were given were a set of rows of numbers, and in each row, there was one or a set of numbers underlined. And all these students had to do was to count how many underlined numbers were in each row. But the thing was that for group A, each underlined number was the number five. Every single time it was underlined, it was number five. For group B, the non-routine group, each underlined number, doesn't matter the row, was a set of a different number. And both groups were given two minutes to count how many underlined numbers were in all these rows. And afterwards, they were asked how long they thought it took them to count these numbers. For group A, the routine group was only underlined numbers with the number five. When they were asked, they said that they thought it took them about 130 seconds to count these underlined numbers. And then when they asked the same question to group B, the non-routine group, group B had a completely different answer. Even though both groups were given two minutes to conduct the experiment, and it took them two minutes to conduct the experiment, group A thought it took them 129 seconds, while group B, the non-routine group, said it took them almost 170 seconds to conduct this experiment. So before I even go to the experiment itself, and talk to you why, why this was the case, why one group thought it took them less versus the other group that thought it took them more, when in reality both groups were given two minutes to conduct these experiments. What I learned with this experiment myself was that you and I, that everyone else in this world, our perception of time is completely different. Even though time doesn't care, time keeps going at its own pace. Time keeps going at its pace for me, for you, for everyone in the world, but in reality how we perceive time is completely different and completely catered to each one of us. So I wanted to look a little bit more into this sphere and, and, and research what we could do to kind of slow down time, to kind of control time, right? Control our perception of time. What can we change about our own lives to make sure that life is not just going at the speed of life for us? For example, when I'm in my own office, when I'm at work, when I'm in my city of Washington, D.C., where I live, and my life is the same life that I live every single day, and I have a routine, it seems like my days are going by really, really fast. But that, when I'm on vacation, it seems like time is a little bit more relaxed. Time is a little bit more at a standstill. Why is that? Why can't I have that here? Why do I have to fast-paced everything with my life here, but then when I'm on vacation, I'm like, all right, relax mode. So I thought, I was like, okay, is there anything that I could do to, you know, bring that into my current life and not have to run all the speed of lights, you know, life just passes me by with a blink of an eye and where I can control the time that I have here and slow down that time. And with that research that I conducted, I came with four points that I'm going to teach you all today as well. And hopefully, if you practice these things in your life as well, then you'll have a better way to manage your time as well and be able to slow down your time. Our first point in this video is going to be routine. And what I mean when I say routine, I mean having too strict of a routine. So if you go back to the scale, right, we had two groups. We had group A, which was a routine group, and then we had group B, which was the non-routine group. Group A thought the task that actually took them two minutes took them 130 seconds, and group B thought it took them 170 seconds. So the whole idea behind that is that group A, the routine group, only had one routine. The only numbers that were un underlined to them were the number five. That was a routine, right? Where group B's numbers were different. They had a variety of numbers and their experiment took them longer because they were more engaged and they felt more present in that, in that experiment. It wasn't as easy as group A's. And that teaches us a lot as well. Our lives are full of routines, right? And I personally am a huge advocate of routine. I have a routine myself as well. But when I was researching this video, I found out that having too strict of a routine is not a good thing as well. Because what happens at that point, think of it this way. When was the last time you were in a flow state of mind where you're working with something and this is the only thing that matters to you? And let's say you start this task at 1 p.m. You're fully zoned in on this task and the next time you look at the clock and you think, man, you feel like 30 minutes to an hour passed, but you look at the clock and three or four hours have passed. And you've been doing this for three or four hours, but it feels like an hour. The reason behind that is that when you're in a routine, time feels like it, it is compressed, right? You don't feel like there's any change in your life. There's no novelty in your life and everything feels the same. And at that point, 
your life just passes you. You're just on this path and things happen around you. You really don't pay attention. You don't give any specialty to these things. You don't give any importance to these things that happen around you. All you care about is just continue going through this path to the same routine. And then the weekend comes. The weekend's just a little bit different. It's, it's not as slow as your Monday through Friday. And the weekends seem a little more slowed out. And then the same thing happens again next week where the whole week is compressed into what feels like two, three days and then the weekend. And that's how we feel like life passes by as well. This is what has happened to me also. Why do I sit in my office? Why do I feel like life is passing me by so much quicker when I am at home in Washington, D.C.? But then when I go on vacation, when I'm hanging out, when I'm by the beach, I'm with my friends, it feels like a whole day that passed feels like two or three days of my weekdays here at the office. And that's only because I'm engaged in that moment. I'm engaged on vacation. I'm engaged and not too worried about everything else in life in that moment. And I agree that I don't want your life at work, your life in your back home, to feel like a vacation. That's a really tall order to ask. I get that. What I want you to do is to introduce novelty bit to your routine. So what do I mean by that? You can either take a leap of faith that completely change your routine from times and that will bring that novelty that you're looking for. And that's going to make you feel like your life has slowed down. That's going to make you feel like you're more zoned into life. You're more in the moment, in the present, and you feel like life around you is actually happening instead of you just passing through life. But I do understand that a lot of us don't have the luxury of doing that, where we can just kind of change our routine from week to week and be able to live our life out. What else you could do is change your routine just a little bit. So if your routine is to wake up, shower, grab a glass of coffee, go for a run, you know, go out of the office, come back home, eat, play with the dog for a little bit, then go to sleep. That's your routine every single day. I want you to change it a little bit. So instead of waking up and going to take a shower right away, who cares? Wake up, go take a shower, go for a run, come back home, drink your coffee. If you take the same path to work every single day, take a different path, different route. Maybe this route might be a little bit longer, but it might be a little bit nicer. It's going to bring a little novelty into your routine, into your life. And in that moment, that week, where you're introducing these novelties in, into your routine, that week is going to feel just a little bit more different. It's going to feel a little bit more longer. You're going to feel a little bit more present in your life in that week. So the best way to feel present and feel like you're slowing down your time and not feel like Monday to Friday is just a speed of light and that Friday, Saturday, that you're doing the same routine every single week, to not have that feeling, the best thing you could do to avoid that is to Introduce novelty in a two routine. The second point I want to make is RPH. So it is very evident that the older you get, the quicker it seems like life is passing you by. Remember when you were just a kid, you were on summer vacation and that summer vacation felt like a lifestyle. And those are core memories of your life. Why is it that most of your core memories that you remember are a few child ago? Because when you're 10 years old to two years of your life, it's 20% of your life. But then when you're six years old, two years of your life is only 3%. And mathematically speaking, I know it's very sad and depressing, but the older you get, a year doesn't really mean that much. Two years doesn't really mean that much to you. But as we age, there's things that we can do. We can go back to point one and introduce novelty to our lives as well. And having a routine. The older you get, the more routine-like your life gets, right? People have their own routines. You see all these older people, our parents, right, our uncles, or you know, older friends where like, when you go to their house, they have select ways of doing things, certain ways of doing things. All these things that they're doing, it's just a part of their routine. And none of their lives are exciting. None of their, none of them will sit down and tell you, yeah, my life is amazing. I really don't care if you place that cup at the corner of the table, because that's where I like, but to be place it anywhere you want. People tend to be very OCD like, and OCD is in a sense routine. And what these people do is they add all these routines into, into their lives. So again, what they can do is introduce all of their lives and go travel more, not worry so much about these, you know, routines that they follow. Or the other thing that they could do, the other thing that we could all do as we age, and this is the most important thing that we can do, is to journal. Yes, journal. I want you, at the end of every single day, to... First of all, go up and buy one of these. Right, just a, a journaling book. Doesn't have to be as nice as this, or maybe a Bible that's nicer. I don't know, whatever suits your needs. Every single night, I want you to sit down and for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, write down how your day went. Write down what happened in that day that was exciting. Write down 
what happened on that day that you didn't like. What people did you meet? What people did you want to meet? You know, did you make new friends? The most exciting part, of course, for me. And what you could also do is, you know, have a ton of writing, you know, overview of the day, people I met, things I like, things I didn't like, and that could be your journal, right? Cater your journal to whatever suits your needs or whatever feels right for you. And at that point, when you do journal, two things happen. Number one, you're adding anchor points to your memories. The memories that you build every single day. And those memories are going into written words you're putting on a piece of paper. And that becomes an anchor in your mind. So the last time somebody asks you, what did you eat three days ago? What did you do three days ago? You're not going to go, ah, the three days ago. What did was that you get three days ago? You're not going to do that, right? Because we all tend to do that. We forget what we had for food yesterday. You're going to tell them straight up, like, yeah, three days ago, it was Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday, I went to play tennis with my cousin Sam or something. I don't know. I do that. I play tennis with my cousin Sam sometimes on Wednesday. So maybe, maybe that wouldn't cater to you, but you get the point. The other thing, the most important thing that happens when you journal is this becomes your autobiography that you're writing by yourself. This is the best book that you'll ever read because this is the book of your life. This is your story that is written by you. And you're the author, you're the director, you're the producer. You get to live it and you get to read it. And every single day when you write down your journal of the day and every single page, there's a different day for that year. What tends to happen is that you slowly tend to realize that, Brad, this is my life. And this is a book that future me is gonna read. Maybe a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. And you don't want future you to read such a boring book where every single day it's the same routine. Every single day you wake up, run, grab coffee, gym, whatever, it's the same thing. You don't want future you to be bored. So what you tend to do is you want to make an exciting future you that you could add novelties into your life. So maybe you're gonna wake up on a random Wednesday, be like, it'll be cool for me to write down on this journal that I want to it. And you're going to do that, right? You're going to make your life a little bit more exciting. You're going to add a lot of novelties at your life. And your life is going to feel more present than if you were not the journal. So journal now at any time, but more importantly, when you age, journal. All right, the last two points I want to make is first, I want you to be present. Yes, I want you to be present. I used to be a big, big, big victim of this, where I would be randomly anywhere. It could be the gym, it could be out with friends, where, you know, I'm talking to somebody, or I'm at the gym working out, you know, I'm in between two sets. And I just zone out. I zone out, I look into the abyss, and I'm just thinking about random thoughts. Could be, you know, an issue that I had that day, could be something challenging I have to deal with tomorrow. Or it could be nothing challenging at all. It could be so right. I thought about, did I change this thing with my car? You know, what does my day look like tomorrow? What am I meeting with tomorrow? What would end up happening is I would zone out and think about just random stuff and not be present in that moment. And well, then I'll look back in the fog and my mind, I'll think maybe 30 seconds to a minute of past of me zoning out. But in reality, I was zoning out for like five minutes, right? And that's not good because then what happens at that point is my gym session that should have taken me an hour takes me an hour and a half, two hours because I'm not really present and enjoy that moment. So that same concept can be introduced here as well. If you're not really present in whatever task you're doing every single day, if you're not present in your life currently at this moment, then you'll feel like your life is just going by through you really, really fast. So the best way to feel present, to feel in the moment, to enjoy life right now is to just relax, slow down, be present, and be present in this moment. And you'll feel like, all right, I'm not in this life to only live for the weekends. I'm not in this life to only live for the holidays. I'm going to enjoy whatever I have to deal with every single day, whether it's shooting videos, you know, work on a work task, slow to work, be present in these moments, and you'll find a lot more enjoyment and even the things that are mundane to you as well. And the last one I want to make is I want you to prioritize people and not things. What do I mean by this? So for me personally, one of the best moments that I have in life, but one of the most slow moments that I have in life, but I mean slow, I mean like I feel like time is just going by so slow that I cherish that moment and that moment feels good for me, are moments where I'm surrounded by family, or moments where I'm surrounded by friends. I'm surrounding myself by people with people that I love and people that I like spending time with. For example, one of the most fun memories that I've ever had in my life was uh, when me and my cousin, we randomly decided to go to Cuba. It was a very spontaneous trip. If you ask me today, did we plan it? My answer to you probably would be no, because I do not remember planning this trip. 
We just randomly flew to Toronto where he lives and we decided that we should go to Cuba the next week. We booked tickets, we go to Cuba. That one week that I spent in Cuba with my cousin is now one of the best moments that I've ever had with it. We built some big connections with people there. We had some great moments in Cuba itself. We had some amazing experiences. And even to this day, when I randomly call my cousin, randomly the idea and the moments of Cuba break themselves out. Please talk about Cuba. And we laugh. We'd be like, bro, remember that one day at the beach when this thing happened? Or that one time where I met this person? Or remember that one guy on the horse and the way he was right? Like random stories that we have from that trip that still bring us joy to this day. And the idea behind that is that what was so different about that week versus any other week of our lives? Why was that week so important to us? I get that that week I was on vacation. I get that that week I did something completely different than what I do every single week. But the reason that I like that week so much more is because I was with somebody that I liked. I was with a friend, right? So maybe you can learn from that as well. Maybe you could also learn to be present. So every single week of your life, it doesn't have to be you on vacation in Cuba. You can learn to enjoy being in your office, enjoy going to work, enjoy driving to the office, enjoy doing every single day that you do on your daily basis, even within your routine. And maybe changing a few things here and there and allowing yourself to be okay with a little bit of novelty. And at that point, what happens is you're way more present in life and you get to enjoy life just a little bit more.